I'm Aaron Canada alongside John Schiffner on the manager show for unfortunately the final time of the 2010 season and Schiff, a day night double header. Yeah, unfortunately. Where's my check? It'll be in the mail, okay, promise. Well, thank you. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, losing game one of the double dip yesterday and so last night's game, it didn't, not that it didn't mean anything, but unfortunately, uh, no longer any kind of playoff hopes for the Anglers. Right, and we knew that, and I tell you what, that's what makes the win so much better. You know, we knew it was over, but yet they went out and, oh my God, the pitching staff, you know, two hits, two hits a playoff team, a good playoff team. Uh, we get clutch hits and we needed them and, and swung the bat well and played good defense. I mean, that's just, again, it's a testament to the kids' character that they've shown all year long. And it was a surprising statistic that in last night's game, the 43rd of the season, it was the first time that the Anglers shut out an opponent all, all year. I didn't realize that because our ERA has been always hovering, you know, in the top three or four in the league. I did not realize that was the only shutout we'd had. But I do know there was a number of games that we did not give up an earned run, which, you know, sometimes bodes well that your defense didn't play exceptionally well. But uh, I thought our defense throughout the year was, was good enough. You know, it, it certainly was not the reason why we lost some games. You know, obviously it just did not get enough clutch hits was the reason we went on some of that long stretch of losing games. Uh, but uh, that's, that's impressive that it was the first shutout. And you speak about that long stretch back there in the uh, the bad month of July, and really that that was what led to the Anglers being ousted from the playoffs. Had it not been so long of a stretch, I feel like this team would be coasting into the playoffs. Well, you know, if we go 500 in that stretch, look where we are. Even if we go, you know, it was it was uh, 12 or 13 games. We go four and nine, we're in the playoffs. You know, we go, you know, three and three and t ten, we're in the playoffs. So it's amazing if you think about that, how how close that is and how you know, that shows you the good start we had, uh, which is something we always try to strive for, is that if you jump out to a good lead early, then you can hang on because everybody gets better throughout the course of the year, and we just, we're just a few games short. And we mentioned time and time again over the course of the season that it wasn't just a lack of situational hits, but really a lot of just hard hit balls that went the wrong way or went right at guys and unfortunately they tended to to uh, stack up well it did and I, we, I tried to tell them and I think that was one of the things we talked about throughout the stretch was that we are snake bit there were some good at bats that just did not come through for us guys make diving plays guys hit the ball right in the nose uh, you know and then there's sometimes just you know you do get a bat out but in most cases I thought we really swung the bat better than it indicated and it just it just did not we just did not have lady luck with us how often do you see a team snake bitten like that over the course of your career? Because, you know, it is the best of the best, not only pitchers and hitters, but defenders as well. And you've got guys here who can make plays on even the hardest hit balls. Right. It, it's, it, you know, it happens. Every, every team goes through the stretch like we went through. It's just that ours was just extended and protracted, and that really, it really hurt. But, again, I, I will forever give these kids a great deal of credit for their character for just bearing through that and not quitting and not dying and making a run late to you know almost make it that's just uh, it'll oh I'll always remember this team for that and one thing that we talked about about this team is that they never gave up even to the very end and I imagine it's it's pretty difficult for some of these guys to have to go home without a chance to, to get a ring here on the Cape absolutely but you know again it's a crapshoot you know it, it's really a very very difficult thing to do to win the Cape League championship it's a it's such a long grinding schedule uh, there's so many variables that you people don't take into account. You're living in a stranger's house. You're playing for different coaches, different philosophies. You've got you might have a roommate that you don't know or you know can't be familiar with. It's just so many things that just play into playing here and and then you have to play and then you have to play a grinding schedule and you just come off an incredibly intense college schedule most of these guys made it to the regional tournaments super regionals college world series or conference tournaments and it, you know they're dead they're tired mentally physically and it's a long long stretch and it's uh, an amazing uh testament to the athlete and team who hangs in there you know it's it's a long long stretch for these guys and you know it just uh, some of them just wear out sooner than others how difficult uh, for you personally is it as, as a manager to have to go home and call it a day today oh it's it's tough it, it what's going to be tough is it's not that the season's over the baseball's over it's i have to say goodbye to 26 27 guys who have been warriors you know i'm getting emotional right now <laughs> um they were they were amazing in the dugout. They never quit on each other. And I've seen, luckily, knock on wood, I, I've really never had a team quit on us here in Chatham. And they certainly could have, losing 12 of 13 games. And they didn't. And it's going to be tough to say goodbye. There's some great...
play kids in that dugout in that bullpen that uh, you know uh, you'll probably never see them again and it's sad to think that you got to say goodbye like that it's uh because you're with them I know I, I know the original schedule was 44 games in 53 or 54 days and we came to the field probably 50 days there was you know, a couple days off, but then we came and got rained out or fogged out or whatever it was. So we were with each other a lot. And, and you got to know a lot of these guys really well, and it's going to be very, very difficult to say goodbye. Unfortunately, there are a couple guys on this roster that you don't have to say goodbye to, but see you next summer. And I hope so. There are, some, there are some good players on this team that will be back next year or so, we would, we would think. Well, I have to sit down and talk to the coaching staff, talk to Charlie and Doug, and see which direction we're going. But I would hope that some of these guys would be able to come back. Now... As far as next year is concerned, how, how do you how do you see the next year's season shaping up? I mean, how quickly do you start recruiting after the end of the season? Well, we've already started. We have kids who have been verbally committed to us. I had those guys in, in the spring, even over the winter, just because of ties that I have out there. Uh, we probably have about 10 commitments. Again, they're all verbal. Uh, you're not allowed to sign kids till September 1st, but uh, we have to also wait. Several of them are high school draftees who are going to, you know, it's going to be down to crunch time whether or not they're going to sign a pro contract or go to college. Uh, but we've got 10 kids that we've, we've committed to, and we'll see how many of those show up. Uh, and then, you know, you just start the process uh, pretty much right away. Some college coaches want to get it done as soon as possible. Other college coaches say, well, you know, let's talk in, you know, after fall baseball's over. And, you know, we'll, we'll do the same thing we've always done. We're going to try to find the best athletes that are presented to us and see if we can get them to sign a contract and go from there. He's John Schiffner. I'm Aaron Canada. And for the final time of the 2010 season, this is the Manager Show on the Cape Cod Baseball Network.